Hi, welcome to Thor Labs. My name is Bill. Today we have a customer-inspired demonstration based on setting up a TO can laser diode. For this demonstration, we have benchtop current and temperature controllers, an ESD strap, a TO can laser diode, a mount for that TO can laser with active cooling, a pair of laser safety glasses, and a power sensor and power meter. Now, whenever handling laser components, it's critical to always keep laser safety in mind. First is the safety of yourself and anyone else in the lab. Second is the safety of the laser component itself. Lasers are very sensitive to ESD, which stands for electrostatic discharge. So if you happen to build up a charge on your person and you touch a piece of metal, you're probably going to get shocked. Now, if you shock a laser diode, it's likely that you're going to damage and even destroy the laser. So one thing that I do to try to minimize the risk of ESD is to wear an ESD strap. Now the strap has a piece of metal on the inside and a banana plug that's connected on the opposite end. We provide the mating connector for this banana plug on the back of our current drivers, so they have a relatively convenient place to plug it in. So once that connection is made, and you've used a power cord that has a ground connection so that the device is connected to the mains power supply of the building with a ground, then the metal on the inside of that strap is connected to ground. So the goal is to always keep that piece of metal in contact with your skin. You can wear the strap on your wrist, but you always want to make sure that you pull the strap tight so that the metal stays in contact. I've seen a lot of people either not tighten the strap or still not tighten enough because as they move around the bench, the metal can still come up away from their skin. And in that case, the operator is no longer grounded and the laser is at risk. So what I like to do is pull the strap up my forearm. And that way the strap is always tight and it minimizes the chance of the metal pulling away from my skin. When trying to find a mount that is compatible with your TO can laser, the first thing to consider is the size. We currently provide lasers in TO9, TO56, and TO38 packages. And it just so happens that the number at the end corresponds to the size. The TO9 has a 9 millimeter outside diameter to the flange at the back of the laser diode. The TO56 has a 5.6 millimeter outside diameter. And the TO38 has a 3.8 millimeter outside diameter. Once you have a mount that seems compatible with the size, you next have to check the pins. If the pins are too short, then you might not make connection inside of the socket. And if the pins are too long, then you might not be able to push the laser to ensure contact between the back of the flange and your heatsink. In that case, you won't be able to achieve the cooling that you expect. So if the pins are too long, you can usually clip them, as long as you don't make them too short. The next thing to check is the pin thickness. If the pins are too thick, you will not be able to force the laser into the socket. The third thing to check is the pin placement. And we usually describe this by a circle on the back of the flange. So you'll want to check the diameter of that circle with your socket. If your socket is too small or too large, then you will bend the pins as you force it into the socket. And that will decrease the structural integrity of the pins, which will decrease the lifetime. But it's also likely that you'll create a gap between your heatsink and the back of the laser, which will decrease the cooling capability of your mount. Once you've found a mount that's compatible with your TO cam package, 
The next thing to figure out is how to orient your laser within your mount. So for this, we'll be looking at the pin diagram on the spec sheet or on the packaging. So here, if we take our laser out of the package and we orient it such that the pins are pointing up toward you, you can then look at the pin diagram and figure out which pin corresponds to which number. Once you have that, you can then look at the electrical diagram, which has the same pin numbers with circles next to them. Pin 2 has a dark filled in circle. This means that it's the ground location. So pin 2 is going to go into ground. And we then have to figure out which pin is on the opposite side of our laser diode. Now the diode symbol is a triangle with a little line. And it happens to be the same for a photodiode that accepts light incident upon it, as a laser diode that emits light. So in this case, we have to look at the abbreviations LD for laser diode and PD for photodiode. So in this case, we see that pin 3 is on the opposite side of our laser diode as pin 2 for our ground. So now we know that there's only one way we can put this laser into our mount. And when we look at the engravings on our laser mount, we see LD and PD, and we also see GND for ground. So we know that pin 2 is going into ground, and pin 3 is going into LD. Once our laser is in place, we'll also take a flange to lock it in place. Now the flange provides some metal contact between the sides of the TO can and your heatsink but it really just locks your laser in place so that the back of the laser is always in contact with your heatsink. Once our laser is in place, I'm going to put it back into my base. And we now have to determine the polarity of the laser diode. So if we go back to our electrical diagram, we see the triangle and the little line. Now the triangle corresponds to the anode and the line corresponds to the cathode. And we need to figure out which side is closest to ground. So the way I like to think about this is that the triangle looks like the top of an A. So if I draw the letter A using that triangle and the ground is at the base of that A, then my laser diode is anode ground. Now in this example, I have a photodiode which has the opposite polarity. So the little line is closest to ground. In this case, the photodiode is cathode ground. So when I look at my mount, I have an LD and PD switch. We said the laser diode is anode ground, so the LD switch will be switched over to AG for anode ground and the PD switch is the photodiode, which we said was cathode ground. So we'll make sure that that is aligned with CG. We had the same settings on our laser drivers. So here we have LD pole, which stands for the laser diode polarity, and we said that was anode ground. So we'll make sure that that is lined up with AG. The other button corresponds to how we're going to drive the laser. So in this case, we're going to apply a single current and whatever power we get out of the laser is what we're going to get. So in that case, we're using constant current mode, which is constant I. The next thing to set up is your maximum current. So if you look at your spec sheet, there's a max current value. And we'll first set that as the maximum current on our driver. So in this case, it's 170 milliamps. So I'll go up to I limit for current limit, and I'm going to adjust this to be 170 milliamps. Now 
Now, it's really important to note that the maximum current limit is just the maximum current you want to ever apply to your laser diode. There's also a maximum optical power. And the maximum optical power is the power you should expect to get out of your laser. If you provide the maximum current from the spec sheet, you are most likely going to get more power than what the spec sheet tells you. And you can drive your laser this way, but it is going to decrease the lifetime of your laser. If you want to maintain the expected lifetime, then you want to adjust the maximum current to match the current that provides the power that is on the spec sheet. So in order to do this, we're going to measure the output of our laser diode and figure out what drive current provides the maximum power on the spec sheet. Now the first thing I'm going to do is connect my temperature controller. Now I usually set the temperature of my lasers to be about 25 C. And that's because my lab is generally around 20, maybe 22 C. And I want to have a set point that's slightly above it. If the set point is very close to the room temperature, then the driver is always going to be fighting with room temperature fluctuations in order to maintain that constant temperature. So generally I'll put it a little bit above and try to take it easy on my driver. Next, I'm going to put on my laser safety glasses. And I'm going to connect the cable for my current driver. And I'll pull my power sensor directly up to my laser to try to collect as much light as possible. And I'm going to apply current to my laser. And I'm going to start relatively low. I don't want to apply the maximum current right away. And I'm going to slowly increase the drive current. Until I match the maximum power on my spec sheet. And once I'm there, I'll take note of the drive current and I'll switch over to my current limit and I'll reduce that current until I have a matching current. And once I do that, I'm at a pretty good starting point to begin using my laser. Hopefully this helps you out in the lab someday. If you have any questions, feel free to contact Tech Support.